This is hands down been the toughest trip I've ever had in my life. I know. So that's how windy it is. I know we said Which we'd take it slow and take our time, but now I just want to get there. After it? Yeah. Oh, this thing is all over the place. It's not normally this hard, though. Hey, did you forget the toilet paper? Babe, what would make you think that you could just bring 10 dozen eggs across the country in an RV? I brought nine dozen, and they were fine until you started messing with <sighs> okay, it. Okay, okay. I can't, I can't believe this. Every decision I've made, I should have made the opposite decision. Every decision I've made has turned out not to work the way I was hoping it would. Yeah. And this is hands down been the toughest trip I've ever had in my life. I know. Do? I, I want to do the fastest one. Why does it feel like it's taking us forever to leave? Because it is. The fastest one? I know we said Which we'd take fast? it slow and take our time, but now I just want to get there. It? Yeah. We're RVing again. Oh my goodness. We haven't done this in too long. All right, we'll go up towards Illinois. Now there'll be a hundred people that will say, you did this wrong. Yep. <laughs> oh, sure. I guarantee you this. There's 50 other better ways to do this. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows what we Everybody's should do. Everybody's a know-it-all. And they know how we should do it too. <laughs> Come on, Skip. You want to go to Colorado? Oh, he's excited. Look at him running faster than you. We're RVing again, Skip. Oh, he jumped in quick. Are you ready? I'm ready. Do you hear any noises that don't sound right? We're not going fast enough yet. No, we're fine. I did a walk around and check. We're good. Yeah, we always forget one thing and we always make sure it's a different thing each time to keep it fresh. Hey, did you forget the toilet paper? We're leaving. Oh, I forgot I'm so tall. <laughs> Only if I take out the gate on the way out. Yep. Day one of our trip, we cranked it. We were on fire. Everything we're was free. going so smoothly. We went from Alabama through Tennessee all the way through Kentucky and landed in Illinois. We're thinking that we're making such great time on day one that we're gonna make the same type of timing on day two and we will be in Colorado by the end of day two. And then I hit the wall. <laughs> and I hit the wall hard, really hard. <laughs> no, and here we are telling everyone we're expert RVers giving Jedi level tips. <laughs> and boy, did we eat, uh, what's it called? Humble pie? Well, no, it was around <laughs> two or three o'clock in the afternoon and I just felt exhausted. I'm like, okay, you know what? We, we've got a good first day in. We're cranking it. Yeah. Let's pull off the side of the road, be safe, get some rest. So what's the plan, babe? The plan is I'm exhausted. <laughs> We're gonna go grab some dinner and get a few hours sleep. And then I know me, I'll wake up at like eight or nine o'clock tonight and just say, let's go. No traffic through yeah. St. Louis into Kansas. Kansas City will be about uh, about 10 hours from, from Denver, Colorado, so. We're almost there. Hey, John. Huh? What time is it? It's uh, 2 a.m. And why are we awake? Because we gotta drive. And what time did we go to bed? We went to bed at six, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> A little burnt out yesterday. Would you like some coffee? Yes, please. Make your own coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You ready? I'm ready, Freddy. All right, it's 203. Let's go. Let's go. Look at that rude person that took up two sites. Whoa, whoa, I'm putting on my seatbelt. That's right, girl, put on that seatbelt. And we're off. Thank you, Cracker Barrel. No traffic. I like it. Is the light bothering you? Morning of day two, and we are so excited because we woke up super, super early because we wanted to avoid traffic. Traffic. Not only did we not have traffic, we also didn't have visibility or any idea of what the weather was gonna be like ahead of us. Should have checked the weather because it was windy, it was rainy. And you know, my dad, when I was younger, used to complain about having trouble driving at night as he got older. I guess that's what I'm getting now because I couldn't see the lines. I was going 10, 15 miles an hour below the speed limit. I couldn't see anything. The glare on the road was horrible and it just added a ton of stress. Yeah, and it was like there wasn't enough light and what little light there was was all going in your eyes. It was all in the wrong places. Stay on I-70 West. Sorry. So we finally get out of Illinois. He stops at the very first rest stop. And then guess what he does at like four or five in the morning? He goes to sleep. 
which is good because he needed the rest. Except that I had been pounding monsters and coffee <laughs> because we're gonna make it to Colorado that night. But I did make the right call. I pulled off the road just before sunrise and said, listen, I gotta get some rest. Yeah, so he's sleeping in the RV for a couple hours and I'm just wide awake. <laughs> it was, oh my gosh, you just can't make this stuff up. So the weather looks fantastic outside. Look at how sunny it is. So what's the problem? 50, 60 mile an hour gust. What do you mean? But I can't see anything. <laughs> oh, this thing is all over the place. Oh, it's, it's like ice all over the road, back and forth, back and forth, swaying. But it's invisible ice <laughs> that sneaks up on you. Should I check the weather and see the wind gusts? They, they gotta be pointing at 50 miles an hour. And the problem is, is that it gets a little bit better when you speed up, but when you get to full speed, it's bad. And yeah. when you go to really slow speed, like 15, 20 underneath, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. You just can't control it. We're only 25 feet, but we're tall like a big sail. So check this out. At first you just see grass, but when you get real close, yeah. you can really see the wind. You have your steering wheel set to like 1.30, 2 o'clock, and you're driving straight. I've driven about, about 25, 26 hours. I've gotten about five or six hours sleep. But it's too much. I just can't do it like I used to. Morning. Rest now. No coffee. But we're so close. We're so close to family. So close. We want to actually enjoy the grandbabies. Well, I want to see them. I don't, don't want to make sure we get there. Yeah. And of course, looking in the rearview mirror and seeing Sage behind me. Yeah. yeah I'm not willing to risk. What happens to Bintex? Something pre collision assist not available. Oh, it doesn't like something. It doesn't like, it doesn't like the wavering. We got there when we got there. I was hoping to be there tonight. If, if there was no wind, I'd take a shot at it, but. Yeah. The wind just adds stress to the whole trip. I can just tell by the direction of the steering wheel. And then look, this guy's just waiting for you to drop some popcorn. He's like, come on, man. <laughs> and so one of the things that I haven't mentioned yet is when I was driving the fifth wheel with a 3500 dually diesel, I couldn't feel that fifth wheel back there. And we went through wind, but I couldn't feel it when I was pulling the fifth wheel. This was the first trip that we were driving that little 25 foot class C, the Winnebago. It was the first trip we had ever had a lot of wind. And that thing was all over the place. The, 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 you know, what, what do they call that thing in the, the, the cars now? Assistance, driver assistance? Oh yeah, or, you, you had all this nice driving assistance. I was brain. getting all these tips from this computer and this thing, and you know, they, they were watching out, I'd get near a line, the, the things would go off. But as soon as it was shaking so much, that the, it actually tilted the RV, meaning that we started getting red light warnings about get some coffee, slow down. And then we lost our, I can't remember the name of the stuff. Oh, it's the anti-collision system. No, it's it's something else. It's named something else. It's the driver assist. The driver assist. It's not the driver assist. Uh, I bet somebody in the comments will know. It's, yeah. <laughs> well, they're building these cars now where they do everything for you, right? Yeah. And there's this button that you use and it helps you no, anyways. It's anti-collision assist. It's so not an anti-collision. That's something else. That that also broke though, right? Yeah, they, they, everything broke. At this point, <laughs> everything can, broke. We can both be right. I was broke. <laughs> we, we were just down and out. And so the wind in Kansas was the last straw. This was like the, <laughs> the, the straw that broke the camel's back because by this point, we were just so done. And it was almost like we were forced to surrender. We were forced because after we had hit the wall after that first day when I had hit the wall, I just couldn't recover from that. Didn't matter how many times we stopped, didn't matter how much sleep I got. I just never really bounced back from that. Look at that old truck. I'd love to drive around something like that. Yeah, we need that truck. You know what I mean? Yep. The hardest decision we had to make because we were so close. We were eight hours away from grandbabies. We were eight hours away from grandma. We were so, so close. But that's eight hours under normal conditions. With this wind, it was gonna take us 12 and we just didn't have the energy for it. So when we surrendered, we're like, you know what? We're gonna find a nice, safe place. We're gonna bite the bullet, stay in an RV park. That way we can take showers. We'll have full hookups. Tea. Right, and really, truly get some Look rest. That. That's darling. That's the old uh, train house. Oh, Rock on. look at that. 
Thank you, God. Thank you to get us here safe, Dad. Where's the office? That's it. <laughs> We're all done. Come on, Mommy, get in there. Super Jump in the cockpit. Sage, you all buckled up? Yes. What is okay. that mean? <laughs> Just do it. Hey, 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 easy. What are you doing? I'm doing it. Honey, fun. stop hitting the gas that hard. I'm standing up. You almost dumped me. I'm going to hit the gas really hard when we get on the highway. Is this slow enough? Guess what? Guess what? Before we left, someone decided to bring nine dozen eggs with her. Okay, now this caused probably the only argument, somewhat fight, that we had. Because as we're preparing the RV and getting ready, Mercedes says, oh, I'm bringing my fresh eggs to my family and your family. And I said, how many are you bringing? Nine dozen. And I just lost my, what are you talking about? You can't bring nine dozen eggs in a small 20 foot, five foot RV. Did you enjoy your sleepover at grandma's? What are you eating? French toast. French toast? Would you like some help cutting the French toast? Oh my goodness, that looks so delicious. She insisted on bringing nine dozen eggs and uh, it ended up being a big problem the next day. So I'm finally driving to give John a break. And you know, the whole while we go through, what is it, Alabama, Tennessee, no Kentucky, eggs. Illinois, Missouri, and Kansas. And no eggs were broken in all of those states. I'm driving, we just crossed the We Colorado are one border, hour from home. One hour away from our friends and family, and guess what happens? This one decides go to look for snacks, and I don't know how he, he messed up looking for snacks, but he took the wrong thing out of the RV. And, and eggs all of a come sudden, flying. <laughs> so I'm driving, and I hear, oh, oh, no! Crash, crash, crash. <laughs> and, and then John's like, yeah, I'm driving. I need a towel! I need a pull towel! Pull over, pull over. And Two dozen eggs come flying off the racks at me. So then I start grabbing towels, getting broken eggs all over the place. Sage is in the front passenger seat. Mercedes is driving and I'm yelling, pull over, pull over. So I do. And it was level, so the eggs were kind of staying in one spot. But as soon as we pulled over, there was a shoulder that was super, super steep. And as soon as she went off the shoulder, I started screaming, go straight, go straight, go straight. Because all the egg come at me. It got all over my pants, it got all over my shoes, it got all over my face. This yellow lava of eggs. Like, oh, coming right up. No, 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 no. And she kept pulling off to the side and it got steeper and steeper. Well, I had to stop. Like, I couldn't stop her. I was, you just keep So I'm pushing eggs away from the, you know, don't want it to get on the carpet. He's going, he's going nuts. He hates this stuff. And he's so mad at me. And it was hilarious because <laughs> I was like, John, you got egg on your face. That's funny. That, that was hilarious. We had an accident. <laughs> <laughs> she starts coming up with these silly little jokes. You know, it's it's something I was really frustrated because I knew it was a bad idea to bring nine dozen eggs in a small RV. The sad part is, is that I'm the one that screwed it up. He broke my She's eggs. driving and I open to get a snack and two dozen eggs comes flying out at me all over the place, broken. It's in the seats, it's in the floor, it's, it's everywhere. <laughs> John. What? You look exhausted. <laughs> exhausted. <laughs> this is this is how the rest of the trip was. So anyways, it took us about 45 minutes to clean up the mess and get all the eggs out. The RV smelt like eggs all the way there and I'm grumbling and I'm griping. I told you not to bring the eggs a lot. <laughs> Um, and then I said, I'm driving. So I got in there and I, I made the final trip of the drive. I just stayed quiet, got us safe to our family. And uh, it's, it's one of those things that- It was worth it. It wasn't fun when it happened, but now everybody we've told the story to has absolutely loved it. And it's one of those things that we'll never, never ever forget. And our RV no longer smells of eggs. Like so eggs. just so you know, but it was <laughs> totally worth it. it eggs and all. Yeah. Are you helping clean daddy's egg, eggy shoes? And eggy face. And eggy face. He got egg on his face and shoes, so we need to help him clean them up. <laughs> she runs behind the baby. 
literally be a <laughs> This has been an exceptional video, everyone. Please make sure you comment and like and share. And we love you. We'll see you in we'll the, see the next video, video, guys. <laughs> love you guys. Next time on RV Odd Couple. The key to expert RVing is knowing how to mooch stock. I'm gonna check on John. He's been in the RV all day. Hey, it's snowing. <laughs> ah, the snow. Can you believe that? Hey. Yeah, close that door, close that door. <laughs> Come up here, get away from that, it's cold. Babe, babe. Yeah. You've been in the RV all day. Don't you want to spend time with I my family? My book. I got my Patri my American Patriots Bible. Oh it's, my goodness. It's one of the coolest things. I started yesterday and I'm going through the Bible. I know, I know, but don't you want to spend time with your mother-in-law? <laughs> yeah, I really do, but I'll probably do that tomorrow. <laughs> We're going to show you how a $400 investment has given us free camping in Colorado for life.